Hello and welcome back. For those of you who are paying attention, for those of you who are long time subscribers, you probably understand that it has been a long time since my last video and I do sincerely apologize for that. Here's what happened. I moved across the country. I didn't realize how long and how tedious of a, of a project it would be moving across the country, but I left California and I'm in a completely different place now, new house, new shop. In addition to that, after the move, I spent seven months putting together the Beginner's Guide to Composites. This is a comprehensive guide for those who are just starting out in the hobby, who want to understand how everything works, what the terminology is behind composites. What is a 12 leaf? When do I want to use carbon? When do I want to use Kevlar versus fiberglass? What epoxy do I use? And those people who want some hand-holding with their very first project and somebody to guide them through as they make it. So that's what I created. It's the Beginner's Guide to Composites and it is absolutely free on my website. There's a link to it down below. Go check it out if you're interested. But now, as I set up my new shop, I'm going to walk you through the process. Over the next several videos, you're going to get to see how I put together my own shop, my thinking behind where each thing goes, what tools do I want to have, what tools do I want to get rid of, and it's all going to start with this right here. We need some organization in this shop. Before, all of my rolls of carbon, they were, in a, they were on shelves, they were in cupboards, and I had to go digging for the one that I wanted, and it was a royal pain, just way too much time spent on that, and it was completely disorganized. I want to fix all that, and I'm doing it right here with this. My idea for making fabric organization awesome is to use this, a pegboard. I put a four foot by four foot pegboard in my shop and I've loaded it up with hooks wherever I wanted and it's completely modular. I can adjust the location of the hooks for smaller rolls of fabric, for skinnier rolls, and it's completely modular. Let me show you how I built it. I started by measuring the exact dimensions of my pegboard. And I cut two lengths of two by four to match the exact width of my pegboard. 2x4 is complete overkill for this project. You could get away with 1x2 if you wanted, but I had some lying around so that's what I used. I measured and marked the same height from the ceiling in two places. In my case I wanted it 12 inches from the ceiling. I then used a stud finder to find and mark all the studs. We'll be screwing into those later. Locate it to line up with your mark, and then use a level to make sure that the beam is level. This will be our top piece. I then drilled three pilot holes, one at each of the studs, using a 7 64th drill bit. In my case, my drill bit wasn't long enough to go all the way in, so I re-drilled them after I pulled the beam off the wall. With my 3 inch screws already partway through the board, I was able to line it carefully with the holes and then drive them home. Next, I found the studs again at the bottom part and marked the locations of those. To make sure that our top support lines up perfectly with our bottom support, we're going to use gravity to help us. I found this spool of weird black thread lying around the shop and decided to use that. We use this by tying a weight to a string and holding it up to the edge of the top beam. That lets us mark a point exactly below the edge of the top beam where we can locate the bottom beam from. Then it's as easy as lining it up, making sure it's level, and drilling our holes through the stud. Now line it up the same way as before, with the screws already sticking part way out, you can feel when they line up with the holes. Next we'll measure and mark the vertical beams. Because I'm using two 2 foot by 4 foot pegboards, I'm putting a third beam in the middle to support the seam, so I marked and measured the middle as well. Try to cut the beams so that they're a really good tight fit. You're going to have to press them in place. Because there was only one stud for me to tie these into, I decided to add extra screws to the corners. To do this, I started with my 7 64ths drill bit going perpendicular to the wood, and then after I'd gone in about an eighth of an inch, I could turn the drill bit and go 45 degrees up into the top. 
I then did the exact same thing with a 3 8 bit to create a pocket that the screw head would go into. I did that on all four corners, and now it's time to line up our first piece of pegboard. Line it up, drill the hole, and drive in your first screw. I decided to put screws in each of the four corners and then extra screws for support in the middle. The second sheet went up the same way and I carefully lined it up with the first. Everything feels flush and smooth. Time to start putting the pegs up. I used these one and a half inch hooks as well as these two inch hooks that I found. If I were to do it again, I'd probably just buy the two inch hooks since they're a lot sturdier. I was able to get 50 of them for about 10 bucks on Amazon. I'll throw a link in the description. Well, there you have it. I would love to hear what your ideas are, what things you've seen work in your shop or in other shops for storing your materials, specifically your fabrics and your foams and your core materials as well. Go ahead and comment down below. And if you're finding these videos helpful, go ahead and click that like button, click the subscribe button so you get notifications every time a new video comes out from my channel. And if you're new to carbon fiber and composite materials, check out the Beginner's Guide to Composites and get that foundation to build on and build your skills from there. And I'll see you in the next video.